Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. So today we're back to talk about uh, XPPS SRC. And uh, we left off last time essentially uh, looking at how to install a simple package. Now, uh, this is all fine and dandy, but there's not too much of a difference between installing a package from source on the available repositories and installing it from source directly with XBPS SRC. So really what, what's interesting about this tool is that it, it allows us to essentially automate certain tasks. And most importantly, the task of applying patches. Now, some tools are actually built around packages, uh, around patches, excuse me. Some tools such as, for example, the subclass suite of, of tools, which are kind of minimalistic programs that you can modify the source code in order to add features yourself. We usually call those patches and uh, they are actually very well suited to the XBPS SRC workflow. So this is why I find them instructive. And this is why I'll be modifying ST essentially. Now, ST in particular is the simple terminal implementation of the subclass tools. So I actually have the website here. Uh, you can take a look at the, the source code yourself. You can actually change it yourself again. And what's interesting is that this is a little C program that you can essentially modify a dot age kind of header. And this is going to define things like color schemes and then codings. And it's also what's going to add new features again to your terminal. So it can be as bloated as you want, or it can be as minimalistic as you want. And that's why a lot of people actually use the subclass tools. Now, I haven't used them too much myself, uh, but I found that this is a nice tool to show off the power of XBPS source. So this is what we'll be looking at. Uh, let's jump into my repository. This is where we were last, last time. So I'll just do a quick git pull to make sure that I have the latest templates. It seems I do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to first XBPS SRC clean because I was actually working with packages on my build directory before. So I want to clean it. Let's just remove those. And then I'm going to actually show the package. Now, ST is going to be available again, just like the other packages. So under the source packages, you'll have a template for it. And the first thing I'll do actually is install it like vanilla without any changes. So if I do this, you remember that we can use this, this command in order to generate a binary from source. So what you'll notice is that we'll essentially grab the dependencies. This is what it's doing right now. And then once that is done, it's going to extract the distribution file, which is a tarball, and it's going to compile the source code. So as you would with a make, for example, a make type command. Notice that it's working with the C code. Once that is done, it's going to be packaged into the XBPS format. And we can take a look at that by going into the host there, bin packages. So this is where it is, ST. Uh, ST, got to give it the correct name though. I'm not going to cat it though, but because again, this is binary. So, but this is the file. Now I can force install it by using sudo xbps install as usual. I'm going to force install it because it's already installed in my machine. So I'm going to override the old package. So the repository is going to be equal to host there, bin packages, and then I'm installing st. My sudo password, I'm going to reinstall, yes. If I run it, this is the default look of ST. So not so much to write home about, but that's, this is why we patch it. We add new features, we add new customizations, and this is what we can do very easily with XBPS source. Now, uh, let's first take a look at how we can manually change the, the default behavior of this uh, program. So the first thing you can do is actually use an XBPS SRC extract command in order to get a copy of the source code in your file system. So if I do this, I'm actually going to, again, do the same process that I were, uh, that I was doing before, but I'm going to stop at the extract stage. So the extract stage is where you grab the distribution file and you extract the tarball. And once that is done, I'm just going to show you where the tarball lives, where the extracted source code is going to live. So it's going to be at the master there, build there. And if you look at it, this is the source code for uh, ST. Now, most of the definitions are done here. 
if you use SC yourself, you'll probably know this. And what's interesting is that you can modify this file and then recompile the program in order to change a few parameters. So in fact, we can do this with XBPS source by using what's called a diff file. And the diff file is essentially going to contain, again, the difference between two different files. So if we take an example, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this whole folder. I'm going to make an exact copy of it and it's going to call it patched st, for example. So this is where I'm going to modify the source code in order to generate the diff. Go inside here and I'm going to modify the defaults. Let's say that I want to, for example, work with the default colors. So this value is going to set the default foreground and in this case, the font color, most likely, and it's going to change the background. Now, the zero actually stands for black. And the seven in this array is going to stand to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to the grayish color. So I'm actually going to switch those around. I want my foreground color to be uh, kind of uh, black, and I want my background to be kind of gray. So now I changed one of the files. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to generate a difference file between these two folders. And this is going to actually make a diff between all the files inside all of the folders. So in this case, I'm going to get a diff between the old config.dev and the new one that I just patched. I can do this with this command. I'm going to make a diff between the original uh, directory and the, uh, and the new directory. And this is the difference. Notice that it realized that the difference was in these two files and then it's pointing out the differences. I'm going to actually echo this out. So I'll redirect this to a changes.patch file, for example. And I can then apply this changes.patch file during the build process by adding it together with my template. So I'll actually move this up and then up again source packages st. I actually need to specify the changes.patch, sorry. Now I moved it a little bit up. I just need to replace it inside because in this directory, I actually need to make a subdirectory called uh, patches. And this is where I'm going to put all the .patch files and all the .diff files. So let's move this there. Now that it's here, I can actually recompile the program and it's going to take this changes file into account and essentially apply the patch. So let's use this and uh, reinstall. I'll actually force it to reinstall, to regenerate, excuse me. This will take a few seconds. Now, once that is done, you can see that it's going to do the build. Again, it actually ap applied the patches a little bit before that. And if we tr and now we actually have a new binary for ST, which is a slightly modified version. And I can try reinstalling it by using the same command. Use my pseudo password. And I'll try running it. Notice that now it's white and the foreground is kind of gray. It's really ugly, but uh, I'll just close it right away. So this is the idea again. Now, this is how you manually apply differences. Uh, you can also take the patches that are provided by the Subclass Tools website, for example. So this is a bit more interesting because usually you'd have to apply these patches by hand. So these are some of the patches available again. Some of them add, for example, color themes, a few of them actually add uh, a different behavior. So for example, a clipboard integration and this kind of stuff. Now I'm going to actually use the Dracula theme just to show how you would use it. So again, this is all in the diff format. So I can actually download this diff and I'm going to select all this, copy it, and then I'll paste this inside my patches folder. And this is going to be applied again during build as we saw. 
So let's go back to, excuse me, let's go back to uh, source packages, ST, patches. And I'm going to remove this patch and I'm going to apply a new one. And this is the Dracula patch. Go back up and just rebuild my package. This is going to do that process all over again. So it will grab the dependencies and I'm going to apply the patch, recompile the program and then return an XPPS, so a binary file. Now that this is done, let's just reinstall it. And now if I run it, there we go, we have the Dracula team. So this is how you would go about applying patches again. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention last time is that you should most likely uh, repo lock your packages after you upgrade them, uh, after you generate them rather. Uh, because once again, if you have a package that is available at the same time at uh, the official repositories and as a binary package from XBPS SRC, it could happen that uh, the official version from the public repositories overrides your version that is, um, let's say, compiled for, from source. So in order to avoid this kind of thing, you can actually repo lock your packages so that up updates by the developers don't override what you compiled yourself. And this is rather simple to do. So we can do XBPS package DB. This is actually something that I talked about in another video. I'll be putting the link to that and also a card up there, hopefully. Uh, but you can do this with the XBPS package DB repo lock function. And then you can lock this package to only be upgraded if available on your local repository where with it was generated from. Now that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was useful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.